In this video, we're going to talk about how business owners make more money than investors and in many cases, asset holders. And one of the reasons I want to have this conversation is that people are drunk on investing and we're going to actually lay out some of the numbers of what's happening with investors. All right. So if this is your first time here. My name is Glendon Cameron. I'm your corporate coach will teach you how to start a business from scratch, create a holding company structure and make it tax efficient. Links below. All right, I have a video and I have a thesis that I've been presenting to you guys that you should start a business because you're gonna make more money. This is my thesis. And I'm gonna talk about some of the things that have happened to me and I'm gonna talk about the stats. Do you know that 90% of the people in the stock market lose money and only 10 to 5% of the people in the stock market actually make a handsome return. This is statistical fact. Don't take my word for it. Google it. So with that in the stock market, that is higher than day trading, Forex, um, Amazon FBA. And you have people operating on a false narrative and you have people who refuse to do any research. Go to the Forbes list of the wealthiest people in the world. And yes, you go down this list, you will see business owner, business owner, business owner, business owner, business owner. Many people consider Warren Buffett an investor. Warren Buffett has invested in Berkshire Hathaway and Berkshire Hathaway owns businesses. They own Geico. They own a lot of Coca-Cola stock. They own Apple. They invest in businesses. And you could say, I think Berkshire Hathaway, I'm not 100% sure, owns Geico. I'm not sure, but that's a multi-billion dollar business by itself. And I'm here to address this narrative and to give you guys the correct information because a lot of y'all are operating on some false narratives. Like, number one, the biggest issue with investing is that the majority of the people who want to be investors don't have enough income to be investors. That's the primary issue with investing. I know the numbers of what, how much people make in this country. 50% of these people in the country make less than $33,000 a year. 75% of the people in this country make less than 60,000. And when you move it up to six figures, we're talking about 9% of the country. So most people don't have the lever of income to really be significant investors. That's the first thing. This is once again, don't believe me. Don't take my word for it. Look it up. Statistical fact. And right now the stock market has become very, very attractive to many people with the Robin hood app. And here's some facts. Once again, don't take my word for it. Do some research and find out the typical Robin holder app user only has four to five thousand dollars in their account And we compare and contrast this to someone that has an e-trade account 200k or a swab account 400,000 It's radically different because Essentially this is the game Because there's such a lack of income Everyone is trying to leverage pennies into dollars and there is a way that you can leverage pennies into dollars, but it's not through investing for the average person. There might be some outliers out there. There might be some unicorns where this guy will leverage a small sum of money into a large sum of money. This happens, but it's not the norm. Here's my thesis. And I have a video talking about how people will become pathologically cheap over at Savage Finance. And I had this one clown come up there. Yo, you be talking all this stuff about stocks. And here's the thing. 
that really irritates me and do me a favor. If you don't like what I'm saying and you want to put in a rebuttal comment, which is you can do that if you do it respectfully, I'm not going to delete your comment, but let's not let's get away from percentages. Let's start talking about real money because I've had many people say I'm up 50%, 50% of what? And I actually had someone that challenged me having cash money in my personal account and she didn't want to say her network. See, I give you guys real numbers, real facts. I give you receipts and I would like reciprocation in that. Don't tell me that you're up like 69% on your stock. Tell me actually how much money you make. And here's another statistical fact. If you're buying non-dividend stock, your stock doesn't pay you any money. And until you sell that stock, you've not made any money. That's a huge, huge thing. Cause I got people out here beating their chest, talking about I have all this stock and stuff and I done well, but they cannot use, the, the stock has no monetary utility until they sell it. And this right here, once again, this is where a business shines higher. Like let's talk about Elon Musk. Elon Musk recently bought $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin. How did he get that money? Business owner. And here's something that a lot of y'all are not going to hate. Good. Cause like, once again, the Bitcoin, the crypto crew, y'all be on me, but y'all never put how much money you've made. I never have like, Hey, Glendon, I've invested like 500 in crypto and I made 20. I never had that conversation. I hear percentages. I hear what you can do, but getting back to Elon Musk, Bitcoin can get to a million dollars a coin and it's, down, it's still not going to make him more money than Tesla. Let me say this again. Bitcoin can move to a million dollars a coin and it's still not going to make him more money than Tesla. See, business owners will always make more money than investors and asset holders. And guess who the biggest investors and asset holders are? Business owners. Check my math, research it. Go ahead and Google this because here is the simple fact of a business versus an investment. Let's say you got some crypto. Let's say you have some Bitcoin. You can potentially make a loan out of it. I think they're doing like 75% loans, but then this puts you into a, a deficit because with a loan, you got to pay that back and you could take out loans against stocks but you got to pay that back. So Bitcoin doesn't produce any cash. Here's what I heard today. And I, I really agree with it. An investment pays income. If it's not paying income, it's not an investment. An investment pays income. If it's not paying income, it's not an investment. You can lie to yourself. You could truly just like, Hey, my portfolio is looking like this, but is that portfolio paying you income. And if it's not paying you income, it's not an investment like your house. Your house is not an investment because your house is not paying you income. And this is where a business shines head and shoulders above an investment or in, you know, if you have an asset that pays cash, let's say you own 10 rental houses, let's say they're all paid off and they're putting money in your pocket each month. Those are true investments. But once again, most people's investments are limited by their income. And this is why business owners are the biggest investors. I mean, Jeff Bezos is like, I think he dropped literally four or $5 billion this year on investments because he has the money. And once again, this, this principle, and you can hate it. You don't have to like it, but it's 100% fact. I have had many people make comments about me buying a Porsche and I'm going to say it. A lot of those comments are rooted in jealousy because they can't do it. I've actually bought a Porsche, showed you the title and actually I'm in a position to do that. I could buy a Porsche every month if I wanted to. Why? Because I have a business that provides cash flow. See, this is why a business is head and shoulders above any investment, including cryptocurrency, 
because you have that business and I estimate that I've invested maybe $100,000 in this business over the last 12 years, and that's made me about 15 million. Name me one investment that has performed like that. Name me. Name me something that is not crazy risky and extremely complex. And you gotta get damn lucky to make some money with this. Outside of winning the lottery, name me an investment that will deliver like that. And here's the thing, with your business, as you become better with your business, as you grow and scale it, your business can make you more money. You still have that asset and the business is an asset. You have that asset that keeps churning off cash each and every month, each and every week, each and every day. It makes you money. So. Let's go ahead and set the record straight. If you want to have consistent, durable income, you need a business. Now, if you want to be what I like to consider a big dog investor. Now, what is a big dog investor? A big dog investor is someone whose investments that are making them a million bucks a year. It is my goal to become a big dog investor in four years. I want to buy a 10 to $15 million apartment complex and have passive income of a million a year. Now, how do we get there? Cause here's the thing, you know, I've had people comment that, Hey, you could probably finance. I cannot get what I want right now. I'm going to have to put down 25 to 30% to finance this apartment complex. So we're looking at three to 4 million. Now I have a rule. I don't all, I don't, spend all the money I have. I've never done that. So essentially for me to get into this apartment complex, I would literally have to spend everything I have. And that is never, never good because you never know what the future holds. So what my goal is to amp up my business to make more money. So I'll have what I already have and I'll have more money. And this is how my mind works because this is why I'm giving myself four years. I am 54 years old and when I'm 58, I will be the proud owner of an apartment complex and I'm going to own it by myself and why I want to own it by myself so I can get the returns to me because once I buy this apartment complex, I'm going to become what's called permanently wealthy. Even when I die, that asset will continue to push off cash even after I'm gone. So I will be permanently wealthy. Uh, the people that um, my family, my people who will get the inheritance, they'll be taken care of. And how do I get to be a big dog investment? Because I'm doing, making money with a business. Cause I, I, I'm like, I'm seeing all of this stuff. And like, if you comment and you talk about what someone else is doing, and this is something that really, really irritates me. It's highly annoying. I don't want to hear what someone else is doing. I want to hear what you're doing because I know the stats. I know that 90% of people in the stock market lose money. I know 99% of the people in Forex lose money. I know the 99% of the people who do day trading lose money. I know these statistical facts and I know this. So if you're coming and don't give me percentages, percentages hide under performance. Like I'm up 69%, 69% on what? 69% on $10,000. I mean, yeah, that was an impressive gain, but that's not life changing money. And this is what we want to talk about. So if you're going to comment, don't tell me percentages, tell me hey, actually, Hey, Glendon, I started off with 30,000. Now I got a hundred thousand. I want the conversation to go like that because the percentages are bullshit. They're just bullshit because Essentially, a lot of you like to take my time. And once again, I have a new social media policy. If you're a yard bird, you say something crazy, delete and block and just keep it moving. So if you want to have a real conversation, come with some real substance because you cannot change my mind on this thesis because I'm telling you this to educate you to get more of you into the business owner class which is the wealthiest class in the world, more so than the investors or asset owners 
because typically business owners become big dog investors and they become big dog asset owners because they have a business that has all of this cash flow. That's why I think that the conversation has gotten kind of screwed up that some people are thinking that investors are making all this money. Well, the average investor ain't making that much money because the average investor doesn't have a lot of money to begin with. This is my thesis that you would be better off building a small business. And essentially I have a, an agenda here. I want to create a hundred thousand new corporate citizens and also educate these people to build their businesses till they get to a net profit of 250,000. Not you're going to be a millionaire, but here's the thing with a net profit of $250,000, you can pay your taxes. You can invest. 100k live on 70k and you can become an asset based millionaire within seven years once again you need the income to go up so you can become a, an investor of significance like hey i got some stock yeah i'm in crypto so big whoop if you got ten thousand dollars in stock big whoop big whoop if you got you know, a fraction of a Bitcoin, big whoop. I want to educate people. I want to push people. I want to bully people into making real damn money. So the fact that I'm able to drop $112,000 for a new Porsche isn't seen as some oddity or super rarity. And I've had all these people who are talking about Glendon, you can finance, you should finance. I'm not, See, I am convinced and the money convinces me every month when I look into my checking account and I see more and more money in a personal account, in a corporate account. That's my statistical proof that my thesis is correct. And I want more people to come over to the business owner classification. And at this point, if you want to be an investor, like you went ahead, you started a business, three years from now, you know, you're making 250 K and if you want to get into the stock market and stuff, you can become an investor of significance. You can actually start creating some asset wealth, but as long as you're down here with a regular old job, it's, 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 it's very hard to do unless you start really, really early. And I'm talking about like 18. If you're 18, you put a hundred bucks in the index fund, for 40 or 50 years, you will be a st asset based millionaire when you're an old person, or you can start a business and become a millionaire in five or 10 years. What you want to do, you want to take the slow scenic route, or do you want to create a financial device that puts cash money in your pockets that you can use each and every month? Or you can keep lying to yourself and like, I'm an investor. Like one of the things that, um, you know, cause I don't hate the stock market. I just know that in my opinion, I have something better to offer because let's just say your name was Ed and your wife's name is Susie and together y'all made $60,000 a year. And this is a very common number between households think household income is like 61, $62,000 a year. And you and your wife sat down and said, we're going to start this janitorial company. And your first two years you make your janitorial company makes $60,000. And then your third year you push up to 150 and your fourth year hit that 250 in, st in profits. You make more money, but let's say in the fourth year you hit that 250 and your whole life is literally transformed because essentially uh, I'm not talking all of this millionaire stuff because I know for me at what points at income points, my life dramatically changed. I mean, you get to 250, you, you could, that can get you a million dollar house. You'd be driving whatever you want to drive. You'd be living where you want to be living. You'd be eating steak every night at 250. 250 is a lot of money. And I'm not gonna go ahead and you know tell you all this stuff because essentially you get to that 250 mark and then you can become an asset millionaire and get yourself some assets 
and your life can literally transform in 10 years versus you are dollar cost averaging into the stock market. Cause see, here's the thing. You have to consistently do that. You cannot like take a decade off. You have to consistently dollar cost. And this is my thesis that a business that provides usable cash is more superior than an investment that you have to sell no longer have that investment to get the cash. So you keep the business uh, like, you know, someone in the comment section, he, he feels what I'm saying, because like I said, I feel that the average person isn't going to do well with Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. I just feel that. However, if the average person would adjust their mindset and come over to the business owner class, change their life, change their life. Because it's all about income, man. It's all about income. And if we can hit that 100,000, 250 net profit, we can make a lot of big and substantial changes. Because like I said, I don't hate the stock market. I don't hate cryptocurrency. I hate the lies and the deceit that is surrounding both of these things. Because essentially, cryptocurrency has become a fanatical religion. And I hate that because you cannot have a conversation with someone because people are like, hey, Glennon, you're going to get in crypto. You're going to love it. I already have money, player. I already know what it feels like to walk into a high end luxury dealership and drop cash on the car. And I know what it feels like to have that cash replaced in 30 days. That's my life. I'm not living in normal average life. I'm not an average person. I don't have average expectations of myself. And this is why I don't finance cars. And you know, I'm gonna keep pushing back on you because once again, unlike many of you who drop stuff in the comments, I am speaking from personal experience. I'm not speaking from someone else's purview. I am speaking from personal damn experience. And that personal experience is going to trump what you heard Uncle Ed or Jim or Sally. What I bring personal experience to the table. That's how I know this stuff works because it's personal experience. So we'll go ahead, join me in becoming a member of the business class so you can start making some real money. The average small business owner, single person business owner makes 71,000. That is like double what the average person in America makes. That's double. And when you dive into the numbers, there's 30 million businesses. There's 25 million single per person businesses. And when you start to look at the six figure stuff and you, it, it, it aligns, it really aligns. So once again, stop with this delusion that quote, investors make more money than business owners because statistically they don't. They don't, once again, do me a favor, go to the Forbes 1000 richest people in the world, look down the list and you will see that they're all business owners, not investors, business owners. They may have taken some of those business profits and become investors, but at the core, it was the business, just like Elon Musk. Tesla, which is 17 years old, founded in 2003, is what gave Elon Musk the money to invest in Bitcoin, not the other way around. That's what gave him the money. And it represents literally 0.3% of his overall wealth. So even if it goes bad, he's not going to be harmed. Unlike many of you smaller investors who are doing dumb, stupid things like taking out loans or using your HELOC to buy crypto. That probably is not going to work out for you in the long run. Hopefully it does, but I, I don't have a feeling. So that's all I got for you guys. Go below, become a member of the Art of Holding, where we're going to have you some real business education. Links below. So with that, oh yeah, also with the, the payment plan, 24 hours, Monday through Friday. On the weekend, it may take a little bit longer. It may take a little bit longer. So once again, the price is going up in March. So with that, I will see you guys in the next one.